Hello and welcome to Pickleball Therapy, the podcast dedicated to your pickleball improvement. This week we're going to be talking about two things. One is seeing the game, and then we're going to be talking about, and seeing the game is really important, by the way, because if you can't see the game, you can't fix what's going on with your game. And then we're going to talk a little bit about folks giving you advice, or perhaps even more than that, getting involved with your learning process in a way that, and also your play, in a way that might be detrimental to your game. This week, we're going to bring the podcast to you with no ads interruptions. I do want to remind you of one thing and one thing only at the beginning of the podcast, which is that our summit begins this Sunday. I believe that's the 26th, if memory serves. So it's the 26th, 27th, 28th, and 29th is our summit. You're going to want to make sure you don't miss that. I'm guessing if you're a regular listener, you're probably already registered. But if you're not yet registered, make sure you get registered for it. It's free to uh, listen to the summit, to come to the summit presentations, but you do need a ticket. It's a different program, different set platform that those are on, and you need a ticket to get in. All right, let's talk about seeing the game. What are we talking about when we mean, oh, before I do that, I'll link down below, but you can go to pickleballsummit.com to get your ticket to the uh, summit. All right, let's talk about seeing the game and what we mean by that is knowing what's going on on the court, both in terms of what you're doing as well as what your opponents are doing. What CJ and I find when we teach our camps and uh, work with with students, with players, and this is not intended as a criticism, folks, because this is something that happens to um, a lot of players, and and you know, it probably happens to other to all of us in life in certain situations where we don't see what we're um, what's going on in front of us. But in pickleball, what, the way that manifests is you'll have a rally end in uh, in um, in one of our camps. So we're doing coach play and a rally ends, and we'll go on the court and say. All right, so and so, you hit this shot, and then you, this other player, you hit that shot, and whatever. And a lot of times, we get the players looking at us like, "What do you mean I hit that ball?" And we're like, "No, you just hit the ball. Literally, like 30, 30 seconds ago or less, you hit this shot." And the player is not aware that they hit the shot. And again, not a criticism. It is not uncommon for this to happen. But here's here's the situation: if if you're not able to see what's happened during a rally it's going to be very difficult for you to make improvements to your game. Um, it's also going to be very difficult for you to make real-time adjustments to your play now uh, because you're not be able to see, you're not going to be able to see what's going on that may need um, correction, right? Whether it's you're hitting the balls into the net, they're going wide, uh, you're you know, you're hitting the ball to the player's strong side as opposed to their weak side and things like that. It gets more complex as you go. Or not more complex, but more a little more advanced as you move down the, the list of things that uh, of, of, of pros and not pros and cons, but of things that you want to see, right? Things that benefits that you could have from seeing the game. But at the very least, right? Not knowing, for instance, that you hit a, a ball that uh, was high and attackable and resulted in, in you or your partner getting smashed with the ball. And smash has happened, so it's not the, the issue is not the smash. The issue is identifying the smash, right? So that you can hopefully minimize the chances of a smash next time. And so as we play, we got to find ways to learn how to see the game. And what we recommend that you do is start seeing the game from its very, um, start looking at the most, most the first couple of shots anyway of the, of the rally, right? To make sure you're at least seeing what happens then. You'll learn the habit and then you'll get better at seeing the game as you go forward. So for example, let's assume that um, if, you, if you're familiar with us, you, we have the metric called Get Past Four. We're real, real big fans of that metric. If you don't know what Get Past Four is, check out our podcast on that, or you can join us in the system and, and you'll learn a lot more about it. But it's basically getting past the first four shots of every rally. If you're focused on that, right, then at least you'll start learning, you'll start seeing when it is that a mistake is being made in the first four shots of the rally. And you'll be able to at least start learning that that skill of of seeing what's happening during the rally. Uh, If you missed a return of serve, let's say, or a serve, did the ball go into the net? Did the ball go wide? Did the ball go long? Um, if, if, if the return is sort of short, for instance, that's the next layer, right? So one is you missed it, right? If you missed it, then you have to figure out, you know, what can you do to prevent the miss next time? If you didn't miss it, um, but let's say it was, it was not deep on a return to serve. Uh, let's say you get peppered with the next ball, right? So the, the, uh, your return to serve is short. The serve team comes in and starts peppering you with balls. Peppering means you get hit hard with balls. You can then notice oh wait a minute that's not what i want and if that's not what i want then how do i fix that so then you start returning deeper but you need to first notice that 
the return of serve was short and or that you got peppered with the ball because that'll give you the information that you need in order to uh, fix your game going forward. Same thing with a third shot or a four shot. Uh, particularly on this on the serve side, it's a common mistake for players to simply run in. Um, say your partner's hitting the third shot, and so you just put your head down and run up to the MBZ line. If you're getting pegged with a ball after that, right? If you're getting pegged with balls in those situations, you need to ask yourself, well, maybe I shouldn't have been up there. And so you start learning how to analyze that situation. But seeing the game uh, is how you do that. Now, once you start learning these first steps of seeing the game, right, which is basically like, um, you know, seeing the, uh, seeing the, um, um, you know, seeing what's going on with your game, right? Seeing missed shots and things like that. Then you'll be able to, you know, once you learn how to do that, then you'll be able to fix your game. But also you'll be able to then apply seeing the game to other parts of it. For instance, are you playing against a player who does not make it all the way to the MVZ line after every return of serve? If that's the case, you have some free scoring opportunities, but now you're able to see that because you're able to see the game. So if you don't know how to see the game yet, again, no criticism. You know, it's it's life. Sometimes, you know, everything in life, we're just growing as, as players and as humans. Um, what you want to do is you want to start applying it to the first four shots, uh, particularly the serve, the return of serve, the third and the fourth. And if that's too much, start with it, just serving the return. That's fine. Start seeing what happens then and then start figuring out how to ad- make adjustments there. Keep working on it. Keep adding shots and keep adding um, other parts of the rally that you're starting to see, and that'll help you play better pickleball. All right, let's talk a little bit about hijacking of your process, hijacking of your game, and hijacking of your learning process. We've talked about it a little bit before with the concept of no thank you, you know, where you have players who'll try and tell you different ways to play the game. Today, I want to address something more, a little more specific and a little more. Um, I don't want to say damaging because the running up to the MBZ without playing attention to what's going on on the serve side is really detrimental to a lot of players' games and can get you hit with balls. But what I became aware of recently was a, a situation where a player had gone to a uh, the seek instruction and the person who was giving that player instruction had uh, basically applied a l- big strip of lead tape to the player's paddle. Now, this paddle was already a longer, um, heavier swing weight type of paddle. If you don't know what swing weight is, you can go to Into Pickle and check that out. We have a video on swing weight explaining what that is. But this uh, quote-unquote instructor had applied lead tape all the way around the paddle, from the sides all the way over the top, all the way around the other side. This player, and not a criticism of the player, the player had no reason to to know, you know, what the potential downsides of that of applying that sort of lead tape are to your paddle, um, or the potential issues that could arise from that. Uh, the player expressed uh, some pain in the arm and things like that. You know, there were, I had some concern about just the paddle size and the paddle uh, shape uh, and the weight of it. And then when I saw the lead tape, I almost lost it because. You know, this, uh, again, quote-unquote instructor had simply applied lead tape, presumably to, um, the only thing I can think of was to make the player feel like, you know, hey, I'm going to give you something special for for you and your game or something. I don't know. But it certainly was not productive for that player or helpful for that player in that situation. So the reason I'm suggesting this to you is I, I suggest that you be mindful of um, of of insertions into your regular uh, situation. Uh, And what I'm going to tell you specifically about lead tape is if you have lead tape on your paddle and you don't understand why it's on there or you don't know what's up with the lead tape, I would recommend removing the lead tape, learn about it, and then come back to lead tape. Lead tape's fine. I use it on my paddle, um, but I know how to apply it and I know where to apply it and why I'm applying it. If you have lead tape on your paddle that was applied by a third party, uh, particularly if the lead tape is on the top of the paddle, because that is normally not required for most pickleball players. It'll give you more power, but it also makes the paddle way heavier. I would recommend taking the lead tape off again. And there's a good video out there. Ben Johns did a nice video on lead tape application. We have a video into pickle or a couple of them on lead tape application. Watch those videos, learn the concepts of lead tape, and then come back to it. But I would recommend, in the meantime, removing that lead tape. I would also suggest to you that if someone is trying to make a modification to your gear and things like that, ask some questions before you um, 
before you let them do that. So remember, it's your journey, your process. So be mindful of it and exercise your agency. All right, folks, that's this week's podcast. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. hope you have a great week out there. We'll be back next week with some more Pickleball Therapy. Don't forget the Summit this Sunday through Wednesday. It's going to be a lot of fun, a lot of good presenters, and uh, we hope to see you there. See you at the Summit, and till next week. Remember, if you like the podcast, share it with your friends. If you liked it, they probably will too. Be well, and we'll see you next week. <laughs>